month. Don't settle for less than a Honda. I didn't. See your local Honda dealer today. Tonight, breaking news, the deadly stabbing attack in Paris. Chaos on a busy central city street. A man with a knife sending people rushing into restaurants and cafes. Several injured. Was this terror? Also breaking tonight, ready to blow. The urgent warning about the volcano in Hawaii. President Trump now declaring it a major disaster. White House cleanup, damage control after that callous remark about Senator John McCain. Sources say Press Secretary Sarah Sanders lashing out at her staff about the leak and now rushing to correct the record about something the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, said on TV. Waffle House showdown, the FBI now involved, the forceful arrest caught on camera. Tonight, what started the violent chain of events? High-speed shooting, a gunman firing from his car while chasing down another driver. What police did to stop the chase? and the explosion scare rocking a charity walk. What caused this fire outside of Chicago's Soldier Field? From ABC News, this is ABC World News Tonight. Good evening, thanks for joining us on this Saturday night. I'm Tom Yamas. Several breaking stories to get to tonight, but we begin with that deadly attack in Paris. A man armed with a knife, triggering fear and chaos in a famous neighborhood killing at least one person, injuring several others before being shot and killed by police. It happened on a busy street in the popular opera district, people rushing to hide inside restaurants and cafes. Witnesses say what they heard made them believe it was a terror attack. ISIS already calling the suspect one of its soldiers. In Paris tonight, the investigation now getting underway. ABC's James Longman with the details just coming in. Tonight, horror in the center of Paris after a deadly knife attack leaves one dead and injures four. Police say it all unfolded just a short time ago near the Paris Opera House when an individual with a knife began their attack, stabbing people at random. Two of the victims are seriously wounded. According to the Interior Ministry, a few witnesses said they heard the attacker say Allah Akbar before French police fatally shot the assailant. Police praising the actions of the officers for quickly neutralizing the incident. Paris has been under high security in recent years after several deadly extremist attacks. Now forensic and counter-terror police are swarming the scene, shutting down a nearby subway station as they try to determine the motive. Tonight, the mayor of Paris saying our city was bruised and that all Parisians are thinking about the victim who lost their life and the wounded. James Longman, ABC News, London. ABC's Mikey Kay is on the scene where the stabbing occurred. Mikey, Parisians have been on edge because of recent terror attacks. Any insight yet on why the attacker chose this area of the city? Hi, good evening, Tom. Well, I'm actually stood just feet away from where tonight's horrific attack occurred and moments away from Place de l'Opera, a very, very busy touristy area of Paris. It's Saturday night, there are a lot of people around. Counterterrorism police behind me as we speak, Tom, trying to establish what actually happened here tonight and that additional piece of information coming in from the Islamic State, claiming the attack and calling the perpetrator one of their soldiers. Once again, Tom, Paris on edge this evening. Back to you. ABC's Mikey K reporting live from the scene tonight. Mikey, thank you. We're also following breaking news from Hawaii tonight. Officials warning that the Kilauea volcano could be about to blow. The threat, the lava inside the crater, mixing with groundwater, turning the volcano into a giant cannon. And those conditions for a powerful new eruption are now in place. All of this as a new crack in the earth has emerged. Tonight, the threat zone across many miles. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez on the scene in Hawaii again for us tonight. President Trump now issuing the official disaster declaration, securing federal money to help pay for the ongoing emergency response here in Hawaii, including the possibility of more evacuations. While tonight, this, a 16th fissure erupting, spewing more lava into an already devastated landscape. I don't know if this one will cause more evacuations, but it is in line with the rift zone, and we are preparing for the worst. We are preparing for mass evacuations. Officials also prepping for what they say is the likelihood of a massive steam explosion here at the summit of Kilauea that could send refrigerator-sized boulders rocketing into the sky. Outside of the park, residents being warned the explosion could send ash raining down for miles. This is not life-threatening, a light ash fall. 
but it is something that uh, people need to be mindful of. Worries about air quality from that and the sulfur dioxide still spewing from these fissures, sparking long lines at stores. People desperate to buy respirators. We can't wait until the ash and the sulfur is down on us. We need it now. Evacuated residents checking on their homes, yeah. still unsure well, when or sometime. if they'll be able to return. One day at a time. That's all I can do. My wife says, well, what are we going to do next week? And I say, let's just make it through today. Tom, geologists say that massive steam explosion could happen any day, and there may not be just one. They say there could be multiple, and they could go on for weeks. Tom? Marcy Gonzalez for us tonight. Marcy, thank you. Let's turn to politics now and a cleanup operation from the White House. After what a staff member said during an internal meeting about Senator John McCain, who is battling brain cancer. Sources tell ABC News Press Secretary Sarah Sanders chewed out her staff, but still no public apology. The White House also trying to correct the record about the latest statements the president's new lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, told a reporter. ABC's Tara Palmieri is at the White House. Tonight, for the first time, the White House publicly addressing the callous remark about Senator John McCain, but still not apologizing. It was a joke. It was a, a badly considered joke, an awful joke that she said fell flat. The comment made by White House staffer Kelly Sadler in a closed-door meeting that McCain's opposition to their nominee for CIA director Gina Haspel doesn't matter because he's dying anyway. McCain is battling brain cancer. This was a, a private meeting. It was clearly the leak was designed to hurt that person. We're now learning Press Secretary Sarah Sanders has scolded her staff. White House sources say in a private meeting on Friday she called the comments unacceptable but was more angered by the leak. Some now taking Sadler's side. A person in the room telling us senior communications advisor Mercedes Schlapp said she stood by Kelly Sadler because she saw the leak as an attack. Does she still have a job? I'm not going to comment on an internal uh, staff meeting. Sadler did privately apologize to McCain's daughter, Megan, but that was clearly not enough. I don't understand what kind of environment you're working in when that would be acceptable, and then you can yeah. come to work the next day and still have a job. Politicians outrage. Mitt Romney tweeting, John McCain makes America great. Those who mock such greatness only humiliate themselves and their silent accomplices. It was Trump himself who famously attacked the Republican senator. He's not a, a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured. Tonight, the White House also cleaning up comments made by President Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. In an interview with the Huffington Post, Giuliani credited the president with blocking the Time Warner AT&T deal, saying, the president denied the merger. They didn't get the result they wanted. During the campaign, Trump spoke out against it. It's too much concentration of power in the hands of too few. The administration has maintained that Trump had no influence on the decision. Tonight, Sarah Sanders releasing a statement saying the Department of Justice denied the merger. Giuliani walking back those comments, telling CNN the president told him directly he didn't interfere. And Tara joins us live from the White House now. Tara, Rudy Giuliani also pushing back on the notion that the president's former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, actually lobbied the president on behalf of the companies that paid him? That's right, Tom. Giuliani told the Huffington Post that the president had no idea that Michael Cohen was accepting payments from various companies for insight on the White House. AT&T paid him $600,000 alone. He accepted a total of $4 million from various companies. Tom? Tara Palmieri at the White House tonight for us. Tara, thank you. Next, new details about that violent confrontation at a Waffle House in North Carolina. The FBI now involved. A police officer appearing to choke and then take down a customer before placing him under arrest. Tonight, several investigations are underway as that customer speaks out about what happened before the officer arrived. Here's ABC's Ariel Reshef. Tonight, the FBI joining the investigation into this incident at a North Carolina Waffle House. Cell phone video showing an officer holding 22-year-old Anthony Wall by the throat. Wall seen earlier in the night yelling at Waffle House staff, angry over the service. Police asking witnesses for video to connect these tense moments. Tonight, Waffle House telling ABC News, we believe there is more to these stories than the short videos that have been posted might suggest. Wall says it started when one of the employees refused to serve their party after they sat at a table that hadn't been cleaned. He just stopped and asked us why the hell would we sit at a table that's dirty. 
Wall now charged with disorderly conduct and resisting an officer, admitting he may have fueled the conflict. I think I went overboard as far as like me going back and forth with them. It could have been avoided. But saying the officer's response was disproportionate. I got aggressive with him because you are choking me. The mayor of Warsaw defending the officer's actions in this Facebook post. This is not a racially motivated issue. And Tom, that officer is now on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Waffle House tells us they train their employees to call police if they feel they or their customers are in danger. Tom? Ariel, thank you. Let's head overseas now to a new move by North Korea ahead of that high-stakes summit with the United States. The government announcing they will dismantle its main nuclear test site in a public ceremony to show they mean to keep their promise to end their nuclear program. Tonight, President Trump called it a gracious gesture. ABC's Jennifer Eccleston from London. Tonight, North Korea setting the stage to demolish this nuclear test site, Pung Yi Ri, hidden inside a mountain and home to the atomic blasts that threaten peace on the Korean peninsula. The North Korean foreign ministry saying it will dismantle the facility later this month using explosives in its tunnels to, quote, ensure transparency that it's ending testing. That move prompting a tweet tonight from the president calling it a very smart and gracious gesture. That gesture, a confidence-building move North Korean leader Kim Jong-un first proposed with his South Korean counterpart during landmark talks in April. The declaration coming hours after Secretary of State Mike Pompeo revealed new potential incentives to the North. American aid to Pyongyang's battered economy if it gets rid of its nukes. Secretary Pompeo back in Washington after face-to-face -face talks with President Kim earlier this week, securing the release of these three American prisoners and finalizing details of the historic June summit with President Trump in Singapore. Tonight, North Korea offering access to the nuclear site's demolition, sending a rare invitation to the international press, including Americans. Tom? Jennifer Eccleston with those new developments tonight and North Korea, a hot topic on this week, tomorrow morning. Martha Raddatz going one-on-one -on -one with the president's new national security advisor, John Bolton. And in Iraq, a historic vote, the first elections since the country declared victory over ISIS after a three-year siege in a major section of Iraq. Both the U.S. and Iran competing for influence with parliamentary candidates. Results are available in about 48 hours. Negotiations to choose a prime minister could take months. Now back here at home, wildfires breaking out across the southwest. The dramatic images coming in. Take a look at that. This large fire caused by a lightning strike in Kelton, Texas, in the state's panhandle. And in Arizona, some 5,000 acres scorched, a number of homes destroyed, mandatory evacuations in place. That fast-moving wildfire igniting near Chino Valley, all fueled by a worsening drought across the region. And next, the tornado watch in four states at this hour and the severe weather threat from Indiana all the way to New Jersey. For 30 million people, it could be a Mother's Day washout. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano back with us on the weekend. And Rob, we've been monitoring a new tornado watch. Yeah, very populated area, Tom. Take a look. It includes uh, Baltimore, Philadelphia, all of Delaware, and it's till 1 a.m. So after dark, it could get sketchy with the wind profile the way it is. And severe thunderstorms just south of Pittsburgh. We've had some damage there as well. And a couple of more pulses that will come overnight, including Chicago so it could have some heavy rain, flash flooding there, and then another stretch of storms getting into D.C., maybe New York tomorrow morning, and then potentially record-breaking heat tomorrow. We hit 90 in Atlanta today, probably better than that tomorrow. Charlotte, 94, 92 in Nashville, so a hot Mother's Day across parts of the southeast, Tom. All right, Robin, great to have you back. Nice to be here. All right, still ahead on World News tonight this Saturday. <laughs> the terrifying moment captured on video at a big charity event in a city park what set off this propane tank blast? And we'll take you inside a heart-stopping, high-speed chase that included gunfire, all of it caught on police dash cam. Plus, the late-night close encounter with a bear, giving a family and a police officer quite a scare. Stay with us. This is ABC World News Tonight, sponsored by Ancestry. Dear great-great-grandfather, you made moonshine in a backwoods still, smuggled booze and dodged the law. Even when they brought you in, they could never hold you down. When I built my family tree and found you, I found my sense of adventure.